Today, we're talking about professional presentations, tips for a broadcast quality performance for your next networking meeting, Toastmasters, um, Rotary meeting, or the next event that you need to present in a professional manner. And these tips are specifically like behind the curtain kind of things that will allow your audience to have this broadcast quality performance by you, the presenter. So we start with this idea that as the presenter, you're the expert. So let's make sure that you prove that you're the expert and make sure that your presentation makes you and the organization that you're representing look like professionals. So if you're sitting in your office and not behind a podium, then consider having multiple screens because the use of multiple screens allows you to hide the process or possibly request that your host that is hosting the meeting, whether it be on Zoom or some other platform, that they manage your presentation for you so that you can focus on the presentation and let them advance the slides for you. Also consider placing the notes that you have for the presentation, not on some piece of paper that you're looking down on, but instead on the screen that's in front of you. That's where the camera is. So that you're always facing the camera, looking at the audience, as opposed to looking at your notes down here. Um, just a couple of ideas and we'll get further into the three or the two screen process that will allow you to do some really fancy fun stuff. Um, but the idea here is to not let the audience see behind the curtain. So they don't need to see your PowerPoint. What they really wanna see is your presentation. So make sure that you start the presentation first, then share your screen. And once again, if you have multiple screens, this will allow you to have a better experience for your end user, for your audience. Um, if you're using a browser to show, whether it be a PowerPoint or a PDF file, it's not recommended. Uh, there are a whole myriad of reasons why it's not a good idea. Um, for example, wouldn't it be nice to hide everything first? before you start your presentation. If you press F11 in your browser, and I'm assuming PC, if you're using a Mac, it's probably a different key. But if you press F11, you go into what's called full screen mode and it hides your menu bar at the bottom, it hides your tabs at the top, all that stuff that you wanna keep private, okay? So that way you can hide this stuff. You can hide the URL. You can hide what are the next slides coming up so that you don't spoil you know, what's coming up next. Um, and at the same time, um, they don't have to see all this other you know, jargon, um, but instead they get this nice, good, full screen experience that is much cleaner. Um, and if you're using Zoom, then there's an opportunity for your host or you if you have co-host abilities to spotlight the speaker. And that means that the person who's doing the presentation is always at the top of whatever the view is for the audience, whether they're using the film strip at the top, or as you can see here, um, I've got a gallery view, but the person who's speaking is always in the upper left corner so that you know who is actually doing the presenting. Um, there are some other options in terms of zoom and viewpoint, but when you spotlight the speaker, um, it's always the best because then you know exactly who they are and where they are. Um, the next thing is there's more to this. Like, for example, don't assume that they're watching this on some big 36 inch, you know, video screen, like I showed in my uh, picture just a moment ago, because a lot of times they're looking at things on their iPhone or their Android or an iPad, um, and it's not large, or possibly it's what we refer to as a hybrid meeting. And in which case, some people are looking at the screen, you know, their iPad or their phone or their computer, but others are actually in a room and you don't know what size screen they have. It might just be a flat screen TV, or it might be a projector and a regular screen. But again, the size and how far away they are sitting from that screen will determine what they can actually see. So it's preferred that you use really, really big, bold fonts, 
large fonts and that you have no more than one idea or two on the screen and no more than one image on the screen at any given time. This allows the audience to focus on one topic, one piece of information at a time. Does it mean that your slideshow now goes from 10 slides to 30 slides? Yes, but then you're only focusing on one thing at a time and you can easily just advance as you need. Um, it's, it's a far superior way to communicate with the audience. Um, if you're using a Prezi, once again, the same idea, you want to hide all of that information, simply press F11 and all that stuff goes away. But again, depending on the size of the screen that they're looking at, this is way too much information um, for them to be able to see this for, um, if you're in a hybrid situation. Once again, if you're using multiple screens, try using what's referred to as presenter view. Now, if you're using Keynote, it's a little bit different. This is the PC version of PowerPoint. And there is, if you click on slideshow, where the purple square is, it shows you slideshow. Um, and then there's a little option here that says use presenter view. You can only use presenter view if you have two or more screens. But with presenter view, you get a lot more features. For example, it looks something like this. And you can start by this section right here in the red box, that is you can click anywhere here and that will allow you to advance to the next slide. Or if you have hyperlinks on this particular slide, then you can actually click on those links. And best of all, your audience is never gonna see the mouse because a lot of times what most people are doing is when they're presenting, they're clicking on the screen that the audience sees. And so they see the mouse moving around and all this stuff going on, it's very distracting. But in presenter mode, this is your view and the audience sees just the full screen. So this right here allows you to then click in a variety of different places to allow you to see more content. For example, you get to see what is the next slide so you know what's coming up. You can see your notes so that you can actually, when you're presenting to the audience, you can use those notes to carry you through the conversation. Also, there are these um, arrows that will let you go to the previous slide or the next slide, okay? And best of all, if your host is going to actually run your slideshow for you, you can include some kind of a note that lets them know when to advance to the next slide. So instead of you presenting, and then at the end of your point, you say, next slide, and then you're presenting, and next slide, and that gets really tired really fast, it's simple just to put a note there for your presenter who, when you say kissing game, they know that that's time for the next slide. Now, if you're going to share something via a browser, again, not recommended primarily because live websites, they're small, they don't communicate really well on the screen, um, and you're already presenting via some online vehicle such as Zoom, so you're soaking up the bandwidth. Now, all of a sudden, you're adding a browser and you're soaking up more bandwidth. And so it's very common that you'll end up with stuttering or buffering, and it's going to detract from the actual experience. So it's best just to take some screenshots to show what you want to share with the audience. And if you can, blow up certain sections of that uh, web page so that you don't have to show the whole page, but that you're just showing uh, particular pieces of what you want them to focus on. And I happen to use this um, YouTube page as an example, because I highly recommend that you do not show video from a YouTube channel. Once again, the buffering and the audience experience is way diminished. Instead, speak with your host about getting the original content or the original video. Um, if you don't have access to that original content, once again, your host is usually pretty smart that would be me maybe, um, who can help you to get the actual original content. And it sounds better from rolling a regular video versus rolling a video that is embedded in your slideshow. Okay, and the experience is better. It also allows you to possibly queue up your videos. We want, recently did an event where they wanted to talk about pie tossing and it was all about pie tossing, but 
all of this is happening and it has nothing to do with tossing the cake or tossing the pie into somebody's face. Instead, it's way better to have the video queued up right to the point where they're tossing pies. And so the conversation moves at a much rapid, rapid pace because the video has been queued in advance. And so we get to have some fun watching people with pie in their face. And that keeps the conversation rolling. These are just a few tips that can help you to have a far better experience when you're presenting online so that you too can create a broadcast quality performance for your audience. And we hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next time when we get together and share some more tips about how you too can successfully share presentations with your audience.